welcome to another edition of Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and Friends. And here's your host, Russ McClellan. Hey, how's everybody doing? In the post-land of COVID, we're done with that, aren't we? Is it, it's all gone? Well, let's hope so. Because, you know, I, I heard a joke the other day. It was like when the Ukraine war came out, everybody said, I don't know how it happened, but all my friends went from being experts in bacteria and viruses to now all of a sudden they're experts in war corresponding. So sometimes you shouldn't listen to stuff on the news or on certain podcasts because it's not necessarily the truth. Anyway, I'm glad you're tuning in one more time to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan, and I'm very, very lucky, and I'm grateful to have Maria Lopez, who's a rock star KW agent. Hi, Maria. Hi, Russ. And what makes this day even more special is her two incredibly handsome sons, Willie and Aiden, are in the house. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> right on. Make sure you lean into that microwave. Uh, microwave. Lean into that uh, microphone, guys. And uh, let me start there. Maria, do you mind if I start with your sons? Yes, go ahead. I'm going to start with Willie since you're the youngest. How are you doing today, Willie? Good. Yep. And how old are you? Seven. We were talking off air. What is your favorite sport? Soccer. Yeah, soccer. Do you play it a lot? Yep. And Aiden, I heard you're a 10 years old. Yeah. That's awesome. And your favorite sport is what? Football. Football. American football. And you yeah. like football, uh, Willie, soccer, right? That's awesome. Well, you guys, I appreciate you being here too. And we're just going to have a conversation today, if it's all right, all, all four of us, and talk a little bit about life. Um, I heard you two want to be influencers on YouTube. <laughs> all right. Well, this is a good first step. You're going to be on the radio. And then we'll take this radio show and we'll... we'll actually convert it to a youtube segment and then we'll send it to you guys so you can share it with your friends okay? awesome uh, so what's up now i'm in the radio business <laughs> they're like radio that's old school why don't you use smoke signals i'm talking to tiktok brother you guys know what tiktok is huh do you think you could teach me how to use it yeah uh, yep all right <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that's so easy dude <laughs> maria you have beautiful beautiful children i want the world to know your story so where do we start oh man where do we start um so i um thank you thank you russ uh thank you for having me here and for um pushing me uh to be here you know we have to go overcome our fears so um a little bit about me i was born in south central l.a um we moved to Georgia when I was about eight, nine, um, then moved up here. We had family up here. I was about 18 when we moved up here, and I've been here since, and when since then. Uh, Leavenworth. Leavenworth, okay. Yeah. So tell me, so you were like eight when you moved out of South Central? Yes. Do you have memories of growing up in South Central? Yes, lots of memories. <laughs> is, yeah. it, uh, is it like, you know, because I grew up in uh, Manson, which is not South Central. Uh -huh. Manson would be probably the opposite end of the oh, spectrum. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. From what I've heard, I've never been to South Central, <laughs> so I shouldn't be biased. But it's not always safe. No, no. And, um, I mean, I lived in the ghetto, the hood. Um, a lot of people would pass by and ask my parents, hey, why why do you guys live here? It's so unsafe. Um, aren't you guys scared? You know, that type of thing. And my, my parents were very used to it. They, it was right. common now to see what we were seeing um, but yeah, I'm glad I'm not there anymore. I can go visit <laughs> and, and raising your kids in yes, uh, North central Washington yes, in um, a safe town, a small town. Right. But you know what I, I love is that we, uh, you know, I, I grew up and I was very, very lucky. I had great, great parents. I, I grew up in a small school, it was safe to go to school was safe. I was, uh, I played all the sports cause it was a small school. You know, I was a big fish, little pond athlete. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was growing up in the north central Washington here in a little town of Manson. And I, I often wonder, like, would I have had the persistence and the and the fight in me to overcome obstacles yes. that were innate, like if I would have grown up in South Central? Yes, exactly. Um, and and that's that's how I see it. I mean, I'm I'm very grateful to you know, been raised seeing what I saw. Um there was it was a you know, it wasn't the the nicest neighborhood but then it also kind of made me kind of strive want what I want and then be grateful for you know going back and saying oh I'm glad I you know I'm glad my parents were able to move out they right. decided to leave South Central LA now were they in, from Mexico 
Yes. So my uh, parents are my were, were uh, immigrants. Immigrants. Yes. Wow, that's a you know it's an amazing plight. How um, how I talk to so many people that are immigrants, and if you think about it, we're all immigrants. Yeah. Right. The yeah, United States is, is, a, is founded on immigrants. Yes. And uh, sometimes we forget that. A generation or two, what we do is we look back and we're interpreting the world differently than our parents did mm -hmm. and their parents did. I mean, I had a grandmother, Maria, that uh, came from the state of Missouri to Manson on wow. Lake Chelan on a covered wagon when she was seven. Wow. And she lived to be 101 years old. Oh, my goodness. Uh, my, my mom and dad were both from Manson. Oh. Um, yeah, so when you think about, like, I always gave her a hard time because she outlived three husbands, and I'd be like, man, what is? You're kind of hard on men. And she was sharp as a tack, and she goes, she was like five foot nothing, right? Little <laughs> tiny girl, but she was a, a fighter and, and a survivor, right? And yeah. she said, yeah, those men just couldn't keep up with me. What are you going to do? You know? <laughs> just, she was just a, a, had a great sense of humor, but, you know, the work ethic that she had, you know, compared to what I have even is not even in the same league yeah. right? or my dad, even my yeah. dad was 24 seven hard work for his family. And, and so what is it like for you now? Um, let me, let me ask you this. You go from there to Georgia and then was Georgia in the city in, in like Atlanta or was it like in the country? It was in the, it was more like the country, okay. the, not really the city, but, um, in Georgia, I mean, it was a lot of, it was hard. It was hard to identify, you know, like, do we really want to live here? Do we want to stay? I saw Georgia as a, it was more, there was a lot of racism. It was, was really it? hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, just the way Georgia is, you yeah. know, politics and everything, yeah. um, it's kind of way back. You yeah, know, it's still, still, still a little bit old school. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's some valuable things in that and there's some things that need to change as we know. And so now you find yourself um, two children. Yes. And uh, they're doing great. Yes. They're beautiful. <laughs> they're uh, my motivation. <laughs> yeah, you're, we call that a big why in real estate. So yes. well, let me ask you this. For people that are listening to your story, tell me what your mindset was like before you took the real estate class. Well, how did you get to that place of making a decision? Before. So, yeah. so before, for me, I mean, I was kind of undecided. I was like, do I want to do this? Do I not? It was more like a big... A big step, you know, like, sure. it's like, I had lots of fear. I was like, well, what if I'm not, you know, what if I don't do good? What if I'm not the right fit? What if I, so there was a lot of fear, but I learned to just kind of dive in, dive in. Well, who's the first person that talked to you about being a realtor? Um, I had a couple people talk to me and that's what helped a lot. And a lot of people directed me to Keller Williams. They were like, Hey, they're a great company. Check them out. They always have courses or, you know, they're consistently teaching their, their uh, realtors. They're really great. They have really good programs. And that's why I came to Keller Williams. Yeah. We're, we're an education and training company. Uh, they say that happens to sell real estate. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Well, and it's neat, you know, for people that are out there. I mean, what I love to do is when I see somebody, uh, like yourself that, you know, made that leap of faith. We talk about it a lot, but you can have faith or you can have fear. You can't, yes. have, can't have both. You can't have both. Right. And you know what the acronym FEAR, F-E-A-R stands for, right? False evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. So it's our mind tricking us yes. most of the time. Yeah. Now, granted, if you're facing down a grizzly bear in Alaska and it's, you know, <laughs> going to eat you, you should be afraid and run. you should run. Or maybe don't, don't run. Maybe don't run. <laughs> I don't know. It, there's, there's a place and a time for stress and fear. Yes. But what we do as people is we often surround ourselves with negativity, mm -hmm. especially as we are now bombarded by information from a guy that's 53 years old, you know, and doesn't know TikTok. <laughs> I, good thing I got my boys here that are going to help me learn it. But it's a constant bombardment of information. And what's exciting when people are feeling stuck, what I always try to get them to do is look to people like yourself as a mentor. And, you know, it's okay to say if they did it, I can do it. Yeah. If he did it, I can do it. Yeah. If she did it, I can do it. Because yeah. the, the beautiful good news about real estate, and tell me if you think this is true, it's a simple business. It's just not an easy business. No, it's not. And that's how, um, and that's, you know, that's how it turned out. It's not easy, but if, you know, like, like how I see it, my mentors, Lisa Boyle and Brian Boyle, they, um, they they've own, done it yeah. and they're go, go, go. 
and that's how I look up to them and and I say if they've done it and they know it's hard work I can do it too. Yeah, she only sold the house every three days. Last year. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> she, you got a mutant for a mentor. <laughs> I got a really good mentor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know what? They're great people too. The boy, yes. they own a team in Leavenworth, and what I love about Brian and Lisa is that how appreciative they are to be in Keller yes. Williams. Uh, I asked Brian on a show not that long ago, because he was in contracting when Lisa got into real estate. Yes. And then one year later, uh, with us, he's now with us, and now he's on the team. And I said, has your life changed since you met Keller Williams and, and me? And he goes, he just looked me straight in the eye. He goes, dude, all our bills are paid off. Well, house, we own yeah. a house. We're like, it's 100%. And he goes, it's because of Keller Williams. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, well, the, the vehicle might have been Keller Williams. The inspiration might have come from other leaders and myself to get you to, to make a shift and change, but you're the reason. That is, that is We're true. We're the vehicle. You, yes. you bring the work ethic. You bring the inspirational attitude. You work when you're tired. You do what you got to do for your family, and I, and I see you doing the same things, and, and when I talk to Lisa about you, she goes, you got to get her on. People got to get to know her because she is something special. <laughs> so I want you to know they Aww, really love you, thank you. and your thank family you, thank as you. well. Um, when we come back, I want to get more into this uh, and, and hear more maybe from the boys yeah. and about your real estate game and, and uh, how it's helped you. So awesome. I appreciate being here. We'll be right back in just a couple of minutes with Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and my friends, <laughs> Willie and Aiden. <laughs> Keller Williams, you make dreams come true. Hey, this is Russ McClellan with Keller Williams. I want to talk to you about something. Do you feel stuck? Do you feel the financial pressures of the COVID virus? That was fun, wasn't it? I'll tell you what, real estate can be a game changer for you, and I'm here to help you. If you want to give me a call at 509-888-0038, I want to talk about your life and getting unstuck. We are growing rapidly. We're the fastest growing real estate company in all of North Central Washington. Give us a call. I want to help you. 509-888-0038. With the new Keller Williams School of Real Estate, you can now get your license for free. Access tools, tips, and personalized coaching with Keller Williams award-winning training programs and start off your career in real estate the right way. K-Score is 100% online and entirely free to students with pre-licensing curriculum geared toward placing aspiring agents on a direct path to licensure and profitability. With K-Score, we're not just unlocking the door, we're opening every door to anyone that's ever dreamed of starting their career in real estate. We're making a difference for you so that you can make a difference for others. Now available for all individuals in Washington. Your future awaits. Enroll today. We're excited. We got a lot of people signing up, so give us a call, 509-888-0038, or simply email us at join us at kwncw.com. Let's go from being stuck to unstuck. You're tuned to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and Friends. Now back to Russ. Hey, welcome back to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and Friends. Today I'm very, very lucky. I've got my two influencers, Willie and Aiden. Hi, guys. Hi. I appreciate you being here. How you doing, Willie? Good. Good. I'm glad you're here. And I have Maria Lopez, your mom. What do you think of your mom being in real estate, guys? Good. Yeah. <laughs> They're thinking, what's the right answer here? So, <laughs> working hard. She's working hard, Aiden. You said she's working hard. And does that make you feel proud? Yeah. Yeah. How come? What makes, it, what makes you feel proud about that? What do you feel when you look at your mom and how hard she's working? What, what do you think? About his working and we can get a house. Yeah. Isn't that special? You realize that by watching your mom, that hard work pays off. Yeah. Yeah, because she took a big leap of faith when she got into the real estate business because like anything new, you know, uh, like when you go to a different grade, it's scary, huh? Yeah. Because you don't know anybody. You were comfortable in your previous grade. So what grade are you going into, Aiden? Into fifth. So when you were, so you're going you're gonna to be in fifth grade next year? Yeah. So are you a little nervous? Yeah. Yeah, just because there's new people and my, my new teacher. Yeah, your new teacher. <laughs> is she gonna be nice, not so nice? <laughs> yeah. So see what your mom did is she picked a new career. That's kinda like going from your school to a new school 
and having to learn all the, all the new teachers and all the new friends. And is there going to be a bully there? Is the teacher going to be mean? <laughs> well, real estate's like that. So I'm, I think it's very cool, guys, that you're proud of your mom. Because without yeah. your support, I don't think she could do what she's doing. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. You guys are smart <laughs> boys, man. So, Maria, how did you get these two to be so cool? Uh, I mean, I push them. I... Yeah, I get them ready. There's every once in a while, I'll have them come with me, and uh, sometimes I get the ah, oh, not again, another house. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they're like, oh yeah, let's go, let's yeah. go. <laughs> but you have goals, right? Yeah, you, you, you we know. have goals, and and I I share with them my goals, and I tell them, you know, we this is what we have to do to get to where we want to go. This is what we, you know, this is what we have to do, and you guys are gonna grow up and you guys are going to have goals and you guys are going to achieve them, but you have to be consistent. You have to keep going. And, you know, sometimes it's little steps, sometimes it's big steps and it's all about keep, keep, keep swimming. Yeah. Keep swimming. Um, keep fighting the fight. Right. And the reality is we all have to do that. Yeah. And the reality is we all tell ourselves a story that isn't serving us. Sometimes we all have fear and anxiety and we all have this uh, negativity bombardment of things. And mm-hmm. one of the hardest things, one of the things I admire most about you is, believe it or not, most of the resistance to change in, in your life comes from the people that care about you the most. Yes. And a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. So, for example, if, if you had a family member that says, you know, you haven't made a commission in a month, go get a real job. Yeah. Because, you know, they, I, want, I don't want you to get hurt. Yeah. I don't want you to go for your dreams because you might fail. Yeah. That's a common thing, right? Oh, the, yeah. I, I call is. it the herd mentality. Mm-hmm. The pack. They want you to stay in the pack. Yeah. But guess what? The problem with the pack is it's the lowest common denominator. Yes. The outlier, <laughs> the pack doesn't like. The, yeah. the outlier is somebody going for their goals and dreams yeah. and instilling positivity on a daily basis. And that's what you're doing, right? And I don't know if you know the story of uh, Diana Kokoska. In Keller Williams, have you ever heard that name? No. So Diana Kokoska uh, was very responsible for the class bold. In fact, she had, uh, I think she was a single mother when she got into real estate, and she had a little red wagon and little kids. I think she might have had three. Oh, hold on. I, I think I do recall the yeah. story. Yeah, because yeah. I was in bold. Yeah. Yeah, so she pulled her little red wagon house to house, door knocking, mm-hmm. trying to get business, and her kids had to just deal with it. Yeah. And then what she did is she kept a journal about her thoughts, about her experiences. And then she finally met Gary Keller and advanced in Keller Williams. And then one day, as the story I was told, how it goes is that he found out that she had like 20 years of journals. Mm -hmm. And then they hired somebody to go through all of this incredible wisdom, authentic wisdom that she wrote down trying to become an independent businesswoman. Now she's a very wealthy independent businesswoman and been responsible for a class called Bold that, uh, that you've taken. Yes. And... It's just kind of a cool story. And, you know, when you have 200,000 people in a company from 58 countries and and maybe you could tell me your impression, but I haven't ran into very many people that would say no if I asked them for help. Yeah, that is so true. Any classes or there's, uh, of course, there's people that are willing to go above and beyond the norm. But that's the cool thing about this company. We call it R&D. Yeah. Do you know what R&D stands for? No. Rip off and duplicate. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to build your business uh, by yourself. You can build your business on the shoulders of the giants in real estate of the walk before you because they're giving us the information. Yeah. They're, that's the education and training you're talking about, right? It's awesome. Yeah. So what? So you, you have these two beautiful children. Tell me about your real estate. Like, when did you get in exactly? How long you been doing it? Um, and how you feel? Uh, I believe i want to remember i passed my test last august late last august and then i got into i came in i remember i called you i came in on uh, about a couple of days after my test so almost a year almost a year yeah wow yeah so one year under your belt here's what i want to know this is a good question i think for other people that are listening I want you to try to remember what you felt like that first day when you made a decision to take the class. And then a year later, like what perceptions were right and what perceptions were maybe not right? Um, Your assumptions when you made them in the beginning. My my assumptions, um, 
before taking the class was, oh, I'm going to get this done in like two two months, three months. Oh, this is going to be so easy. I'm going to go take the test and I'm going to pass it right off the bat. And no, it was <laughs> instead of three months, it was six months. And instead of one test, it was a couple tests. Well, good for you. And That's normal too, right? Yeah, and it, you know, and the whole time I was like, hitting myself hard because I was like, I have to do this. I mm -hmm. have to do this. I have to do this. Um, but yeah, it was a process. It, it's not the easiest, you know, the easiest to go from, oh, yeah, I got it all down. I already know it type of thing. No, um, it's a whole different. Yeah. And then what about when you pass your test? Do you know how to sell real oh, estate? Oh, yes. <laughs> it was like, oh, my goodness, I did it. And now, Let's go. <laughs> and, and, and then the real work starts, right? Then you have to learn yes. how to sell real estate. Exactly, yeah. The test gives you a license to make money is what yes. I say. But then you have to learn how to do the yes. business. Yes. And you have to, and you have to dedicate, you know, you have to say, okay, um, what do I have to learn? How do you do this? And you have to ask all these questions because you don't know. Um, and you can't just assume. So you have to reach out, reach out to people. I remember I was calling you, I was calling so many people right. like, ah, what do I do now? Right. Well, that is the courage that is in you. And we talk about it a lot, but did you know that fear can be present without courage, but courage cannot be present without fear. Yes. So having the courage to overcome anxiety or nervousness yes. is a is a skill set. Yes. And it's one that we have to work on all the time. Yeah. Because there, just yesterday, I was in a, in a place where I was like, man, I don't know. That's a lot. <sighs> I'm taking those big, deep breaths. Yeah. Like, that's a lot for me to take on. That's a lot for me to handle. You know, throwing a curveball. Like, wow. Here we go again. And, you know, um, my daughter actually gave me some advice. She's 30 years old, has two kids. I was with my one-month-old grandson or six-week-old grandson and my three-and-a-half-year-old grandson at the bowling alley. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, I got to go do a bunch of stuff again. I got to do this and that. And she goes, you know what, Dad? She goes, you'll do it. You always do. Yeah. You just have, to, awesome. deci you, you just have to decide. Yeah. And so it's funny. She's 30. Yeah. And a, a doctor <laughs> of audiology, right? And uh, it's like, oh. And so it was kind of a proud moment because she was giving me inspiration mm -hmm. as she's trying to navigate two kids, a job, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and do her thing. And uh, uh, it's just, it's cool, right? But because when do you think, because you've done very well, you, you've you done, would you, would you say you're happy with your year? I am. I mean, I never thought I was going to, you know, be go, go, go. I saw it like I remember getting a couple first transactions and I was like wow you know like oh this is it <laughs> and then I kept going and going and going and it's like oh my goodness I look back and it's like wow I can't believe I did that and for me a lot of it has to do with faith like I I'm grateful like every day I'm like oh thank you you know I'm always saying thank you Jesus thank you thank right. you thank you and um for me it's that being just being grateful yeah. Well, there's a lot to that. You know, I tell people if you're going to do one thing, if you feel stuck, uh, this is my go to is find a habit you already do, like brush your teeth. Hopefully you have that habit. Do you guys brush your teeth? <laughs> That's good to know. Would you tell me if you didn't? <laughs> Maybe. Bunch of YouTube influencers over here. So you find a habit like brush your teeth that you already have in your brain. And then you need, if you need to change something, here's the one thing you can change. You write on your mirror in your bathroom where you brush your teeth, or in your bedroom, if you brush your teeth in your bedroom, I guess, wherever you brush your teeth, three things you're grateful for. And you say them out loud a couple times. Because the thing is, your brain doesn't know what's real or not real or true or not true. It's just going to go find the evidence to support it. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you start using what they call affirmations, you can yes. go from being grateful to what your other affirmations are. And the next thing you know, your brain's going to go instinctually. It's just genetic. It's built into our DNA. It instantly will release the chemicals like dopamine, et cetera, to go find the evidence to support your vision, which you've enunciated out loud. Yeah. Is that the right word? Enunciate? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The point is that when you say something out loud, and, and sadly it works in the other way. If you say, I'm, I'm not beautiful, I'm, I'm stupid, um, these things, your brain doesn't know if it's true or false. It's just going to go give give you those chemicals to help provide the evidence to support you. So that's why when we feel bad and we're being negative, it's like a spiral effect, a yeah. downward spiral. But when you're positive, it also works that way. Yeah. I can do it. I am beautiful. Yes. I am worthy. 
I am capable. I am resourceful. Those are very important things to say out loud, right? And then your day is going to be different one day at a time. All right, when we come right back, we're going to talk some more with my two YouTube influencers, Willie and Aiden, (laughs) and their beautiful mother, Maria Lopez. Thank you, Russ. Hello, William. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner and designated broker of Keller Williams Realty, North Central Washington. Hey, thanks for tuning into our show each and every Saturday morning. I wanted to share the fact we have over 50 real estate agents, and there's a reason for that. Mainly, it's relationship and culture. You know, sometimes people definitely look at the money and the commissions and the splits. But at the end of the day, it's about relationships, trust, that familial connection that you have at Keller Williams. That's what we strive to do, and that's how we look at our clients. We now have offices in Brewster, Chelan, and Wenatchee. We have agents in Wenatchee and East Wenatchee and Kashmir and Leavenworth, Chelan, Brewster. Really having a good time. So if you're interested in learning about why is Keller Williams Realty growing as fast as we've grown and have as many agents that are focused on their clients as we do, give us a call at 509-888-0038 or just stop by and see us at 1111 North Mission Street right here in Wenatchee. Hey, this is Russ McClellan. You know, we started our real estate company, Keller Williams Realty, North Central Washington, in the spring of 2018. We've grown to be the largest real estate company in North Central Washington, and there's a reason for that. We attract people that want to keep the vast majority of the money they earn because they deserve it. We attract people that know that Keller Williams is the most advanced education and training real estate company and the largest real estate franchise system on the planet. We're in approximately 55 countries with approximately 170,000 agents with the most advanced technology in a world that is driven by the digital age that there is in real estate. We also, if that's not enough, profit share at 49% above a predictable expense line monthly. If you're interested in learning more about Keller Williams Realty NCW, give us a call today at 509-888-0038 and let's talk real estate. Have a great day. You're listening to Keller Williams Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. Now back to the show. Hey, welcome back to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and my friends, Willie and Aiden, 10 and 7. Aiden, you're 10. Willie, you're 7 years old. And Marie Lopez, their mother, who's a rock star Keller Williams agent. Guys, we talked. Uh, Aiden, you are uh, learning English. Yes. Right. You, you seem to know quite a bit already. And Willie, you're, you know English and Spanish? And so you're teaching your brother English, right? Yep. How's that? Is that going good? It seems like it's working. Yeah. All right. So Aiden, you remember Mexico? Yeah, I right. remember about there. Uh, tell me, tell me what it was like in Mexico. What was your day like? It was cool. I went to the party to places, and probably I was there at home when I was when I was born. I I was going to play outside. And you milked cows, I heard. Yeah. You were on a was farm? My, was my grandpa. Right on. Now, could you say the same thing to me in Spanish? Yo cuando estaba allá, eh, yo cuando estaba aburrido, salía afuera. Y, y yo también ordeñaba las vacas a veces. Le ayudaba a mi abuelo. Muy bien. Gracias, amigo. Willie, um, what, what do you like to do right now? What do you like to do this summer? What do you do for fun? You got to lean into the mic, though, bud. Uh, go to the pool. Okay. You like to swim? Yep, a lot. A lot. <laughs> well, well, tell me, how do you teach your brother? How, how are you helping your brother learn English at seven years old? How are you doing that? Um, telling him um, the first words, then he gets, then I, he gets them right. I see. So you say, <laughs> you know, here, I want you to tell me the word in English. And then he'll guess, and then you'll tell him if it's right or wrong and what the right word is? Yep. Is that right, Aiden? Yep. Well, that's pretty nice of you guys. I can tell you're going to be a solid team your whole life. You're good brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'm proud of you, <laughs> and uh, I'm proud of you for supporting your mom in real estate. Because that That is a lot easier when you have your family to, behind you when you're trying a new business. All right. Maria? Yes. I'm so <laughs> impressed. These boys are amazing, and you should be just like... I mean, I bet you wake up just going, man, oh, man, oh, man. My yes. Lucky. And your faith has got you through. So what would you tell people that are in a bad place? 
Um, you know, there's a lot of depression out there right now. Oh, yes. The COVID virus created a lot of problems for people. One of my friends, you know, committed suicide not that long ago, and it was very challenging. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I always wish you'd do more. And then, you know, I, I tell people, look, when you're in a tough spot, you got to talk to people. Yeah. And, and, you know, you have, and I don't care. And uh, this guy on TV, who's a UFC fighter, he said, uh, hey, man, after he won the fight, he, he said, I wish my mate would have talked to me and cried on my shoulder because now I got to go cry at his funeral. Oh, my goodness. You know, so w when you when you know real estate, because one of my missions in life is to change lives using uh, real estate as a vehicle. So the mission statements is like this to change life to the life you want and the life you deserve using real estate as the vehicle to do it. That's the mission statement. Right. Mm -hmm. So what would you what would you tell people? You're, you're one year in the business. I'm 33 years in the business. I'm yes. learning every day. I'm learning from these two young men right here. <laughs> so what would you tell your friends that are just like they're not making enough money or their boss is mean or they're looking for a change, um, whether they're at a current real estate company and they want to make a change or they're, they're just thinking, I want to get into real estate because we now have a free school. Yeah. That's free for everybody. We yeah, pay the bill. That's awesome. Yeah. So what would you tell them if they're just kind of stuck? I, w I would say overcome your fears. That's the biggest one for me. And how do you do that if you don't know what to do? <sighs> reach out to people. Uh, reach out. Ask. I've, um, I remember when I was, before real estate, I was in um, the food industry. I was in Sleeping Lady Mountain Resort. I was working as a supervisor at Kingfisher. Um, and then COVID hit. They closed down. I was actually on vacation when COVID hit. And my boss calls me, um, sh the chef, Michael, Mike, um, Christian, sorry, chef Christian calls me and he says, Maria, uh, you don't have a job anymore. COVID, wow. you know, we're closing down the restaurant. And it was, it was kind of like, oh man, like I couldn't believe it. Cause I was in here. I was in Mexico. I was on vacation. Right, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait. <laughs> and when he said, Oh yeah, don't come back. I mean, you know, take some more time off. <laughs> wow. It was, it was almost unreal. Like it, in the back of my head, I was like, is this really going on? Like, is this real? And then I come back and yes, COVID, COVID was still here. Yep. The restaurant was closed down and that was like, okay, you need to get, you need to, what am I going to do? Like, where am I going to work? This yeah. is what I've done, you know, for so many when years. All the like, businesses are closed. Everything's closed. Like, what am I going to do? They still want to eat, the kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you still have to provide for your family. Right? So it's yep. like, what What do I do now? And that's when it was like, get, you know, get to get the books out, get, get studying, mm -hmm. get into real estate. Yeah. Get busy getting busy. Yeah. And for me, it was more like, don't do it for yourself. Do it for your family. Do it for them. Right. So that's what that that was like the like no don't feel too comfortable because co because of COVID no it's like wake up Maria wake up. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I tell people that success and money have very little to do with each other. Not that we're allergic to it, but I made some big mistakes in my career uh, for quite a few years, decades, thinking that real estate uh, financial gain was success, and it, it just drove me into a, a weird place. It's a whole other topic, right? But I finally realized that. Helping people was what I was missing. Yeah. I was focusing on winning, like competitiveness, <laughs> you know. I love that. And that came with money. But I was also very shallow in my heart. Yeah. And, you know, when I started thinking about how real estate can help families, and when I was selling real estate, um, if I had a financial goal, it wasn't nearly as important as if I had a big why, like your two kids, or like, you know, I'm going to help two families this month. Yeah. When, when I think about the two people, the two sets of families or the two people that want to buy a house for me and they're trusting me, boy, all of a sudden I'm going to strap that on and take it and own it. And then I'm going to, that's going to get yes. me out of bed when I don't want to get out of bed, yes. right? Because I'm not going to let those people down. Exactly. And right now, even though the market's uh, different than it was, there's, I want you to know this because I've been through a lot of shifts in 33 years, right? There is more opportunity now than there's ever been in real estate. And I want the people that are listening to know that you just have to do what she said. Maria said profoundly, lean into someone. Yes. Lean into Reach someone out. that's not negative. Run away from people that are negative. And don't yes. try to change them necessarily. No. Work on yourself, right? Yeah. Do, you, do you think that's important? Just focusing on you first? It is important because your, you know, your mentality has, you know, your mental state has a lot to do with what you're going to do, you know, so you having that peace and, and focusing on you 
and letting go of the negativity is definitely really important. Yeah, and when COVID, we didn't have an office that was open either, so it was harder, <laughs> you know? And it was like, well, we all worked at Starbucks anyway, but, <laughs> but what I realized is that the camaraderie is important. The, the getting together and learning together and yes. inspiring one another and listening to each other you know, we're pushing 90 real estate agents now, and we have a long way to go. Yeah. We're going to go, we're just going to keep helping people yeah. because you know what? There's always room for hardworking, talented people. Yes. And, and get, we're going to keep growing. And if you're, if, I can promise you this, if you have desire and you will do the right things in the right order, and we'll show you how to do it. And it's not complicated. It's not easy, but it's, it's simple. Mm -hmm. We're not brain surgeons. I promise. Yeah. We're not air, we're not astrophysicists. I promise. We're not <laughs> biology majors. I promise. We're just real estate brokers. So yes. it's simple, uh, but it's not easy because it takes discipline. Yes. And discipline is something that we, yeah. uh, when you look around the world, it's not exactly like it once was. Yeah. No. But for you and other people like you that have the discipline, the sky's the limit. Exactly. You can go as far as you want to go. And in Keller Williams, what's cool is you don't have to look very far to see right in our face, Lisa and Brian, as an example. Yes. Or if you go to a regional meeting, uh, like a mega camp, and all of a sudden you see 25,000 people from 57 countries going, whoa, <laughs> whoa, I did two deals. This guy did 200. <laughs> I, I didn't know that was a thing. You know, it's humbling, but it's also they're so transparent. And what you find out, Maria, is success is boring. Yeah. Success is boring. It's hard for me to learn that one. Because that means you're, what means, what I mean by that is you're doing consistently the same things. Yeah. You're lead generating, you're mm -hmm. following up, you're lead generating. You need the challenge. Yeah. You, you, you need the challenge to, you know, have that, wow, I did it. I can't believe it. You know, like it was hard, but I did it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I say adversity breeds clarity if you let it. Uh, sometimes though, what happens is we get stalemated, meaning we're, we find ourselves stuck and we feel like something, somebody owes us something. We, we start to play this fair and unfair game. Like life isn't fair. It's not fair that I ended up this way. It's not fair that this happened to me or that happened to me. The problem with that mindset that a lot of us have, unfortunately, is that there's always a perpetrator and there's always a victim. And 99% of the time we play the victim. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're playing the victim, even if it's true, it's not going to serve you because yeah. being a victim is not going to get you out of where yeah. you're at. So I tell people when they feel, uh, and I have to learn this too, because every once in a while I'll feel like, man, I got a lot going on. Uh, I'm tired. I need to like, you know, I just need to take a break. And, and I'm not saying you need to work all the time at all. There's life work balance. But mm -hmm. sometimes when you have a lot on your plate and you uh, procrastinate, it makes it worse. The stress doesn't go away. Yeah, that's So true. sometimes checking stuff off that list that it, you got it done, does that feel good? You, oh, yes. You passed your test. Did that feel good? Yes. You sold your first house. Did that feel oh, good? Oh, yes. Now, now, you've done a lot of contracts in your first year, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. A lot of writing. And now look at you. And now you're in a, in a position to not only inspire your boys, but inspire other friends that you might know yes. that can do what you did. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. Anybody can do it, right? Anybody. Yeah. If well, I did it, they can too. Yeah. I tell you what, it's uh, such an inspiring story. Thank you guys for coming in today. Thank you, Russ. All thank right. you. Uh, yeah. Willie, thank you, man. Thank you. It's very, I'm very proud of you for teaching your brother some English. You guys, you're doing good, by the way, and your English is great. Thank you. All right. Maria Lopez, uh, how do we get a hold of you? What's your cell phone number? 509-881-5028. 881-5028. Maria Lopez, she is a real estate rock star, so just give her a call if you want to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. She's your girl. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back with Michael Maher and Prime Lending for our last segment. Thanks for tuning in. Keller Williams, you make dreams come true. With the new Keller Williams School of Real Estate, you can now get your license for free. Access tools, tips, and personalized coaching with Keller Williams award-winning training programs and start off your career in real estate the right way. K-Score is 100% online and entirely free to students with pre-licensing curriculum geared toward placing aspiring agents on a direct path to licensure and profitability. With K-Score, we're not just unlocking the door, we're opening every door to anyone that's ever dreamed of starting their career in real estate. We're making a difference for you so that you can make a difference for others. Now available for all individuals in Washington. Your future awaits. Enroll today. We're excited. 
We've got a lot of people signing up, so give us a call, 509-888-0038, or simply email us at us at kwncw.com. Let's go from being stuck to unstuck. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner with Keller Williams Realty and the host of this show, Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and Friends. I want to take just a minute to say a heartfelt thank you for your support and tuning into our show each and every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. I personally have made some amazing friendships as a direct result of this radio show, and I couldn't be more grateful. As always, throw the phone in the drawer, be present, spend some time with your friends and loved ones, and make it a fantastic Saturday. Thanks again for your amazing support of Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and Friends. You're enjoying the real estate show, Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and Friends. Here's more with Russ. Hey, welcome back to Home Sweet with Russ McClellan and friends. How are you doing, Michael Maher with Prime Lending? I'm doing well, Russ. Happy to be here and give everyone an update on this crazy market. Yeah, I love these inspirational uh, shows that we're doing, man. Some really cool people. Yeah, what a weird time to be in real estate, huh? A little shift. It is. A little, yep. sh- a little shift in re- interest rates. And uh, there's a lot of speculation out there. Could you Can you maybe try to help? clarify it from the world of mortgage what is going on yeah absolutely so basically i won't bore everyone with the specifics on how interest rates work but basically the fed did um release some some information and they ended up raising the rates another three quarter of a percent and interest rates went in the opposite direction which mortgage interest rates i should say Um, and a lot of people may not know that mortgage interest rates are not ted tied to the federal funds rate. Um, so when things happen on uh, as far as what the Fed th- does, it does not directly reflect what mortgage rates are going to do. Mortgage rates are typically tied to the treasury market. So with everything that happened, mortgage rates came down and we saw a slight increase in, in mortgage applications. But I just saw some data um, on uh, a mortgage news forum that I follow quite often. And it says that as of right now, mortgage applications are at their lowest that they've been in almost 20 years. And people might say, well, wow, that means the mortgage interest rates are either high, people are scared, they don't want to buy. Um, It's a bad time to buy because applications are down and so on. But what I want to caution people and actually encourage people to think of is the positive spin on that. And that is, there's less competition. If there's less people putting applications in for mortgages, that means there's gonna be less people out there shopping for homes, which gives you the upper the upper hand as a buyer who's still in the market, still pushing through this shift to turn it into a positive and possibly get seller paid closing costs. You could maybe get some repairs or updates done on the seller's dime. We're entering a more balanced market, and dare I say, maybe eventually a buyer's market, depending on how everything carries out throughout the end of the year. But it's not something to be fearful of, just knowledgeable of what types of strategies you can use to best help you achieve your goals. Yeah, I mean, I look at uh, a year ago, and I tell people this, would you rather be a real estate broker or a buyer, either one, that's in the market we experienced for quite a few years where... You can't have inspections. You barely could have a finance contingency. And you're probably going to be in a bidding war with 45 other people in the first five minutes that it's listed. Now, that's not fun either. Even though rates were good, quite often people were paying over full price without inspection contingencies, which is a very bad idea. I mean, I obviously have told everybody in our company if somebody did, and during those times, if they didn't want to put an inspection addendum to protect the buyer, if they chose as the buyer to not do that to make their offer more competitive, I told my agents, hey, I want you to email them and tell them it's a really bad idea. So we have that in writing because people were willing to gamble. And, you know, that's a huge gamble. What if the foundation's bad? What if the roof's bad? I mean, these are big ticket items. Well, to your point, now that the market has shifted a little bit, sellers are demonstrating more flexibility and that creates this opportunity where we could become more strategic in the way we structure our offers and making sure that we're covering our bases with inspections and feasibility studies and so on. So I agree with you, man. I think it's a, it's a great time to be in real estate. I mean, this is the thing that I've known forever about real estate in 30 plus years is that, you know, in a shift, you're going to shuffle the deck, right? And, and, And you're only as good as your last deal. So 
here's the thing. The people that have opportunities to build relationships with people like Prime, you and Sharon, Prime Lending, uh, are, are going to, and then work with our, our company. So we talk a lot about structuring offers, right? And we, we say it's fair that we work together to, to, to show people in real estate and buyers how to structure offers to get the most out of what they have to work with. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a great team effort and that's the most important thing is it's not one sided. People might think, Oh, I only work with my real estate agent to figure out what the offer is. Well, no, if you're working with a good lender and that lender can say, you know, listen, if you do $50,000, a $50,000 price reduction, the seller's not going to net what they probably want, but let's say the seller can give you a $30,000 credit towards your closing costs they can net a little bit more and you actually end up with a lower payment than if you had the higher price drop and so it's kind of a win-win at that point on both sides but you don't know to have these conversations unless you're working with people that have already worked through these scenarios or are constantly creating value on all sides of the transaction to make sure that you're well taken care of and that the best deal that you're able to get is, is the one that comes together. Yeah. Here's the thing that I always tell people and in any market, especially now, um, we all have friends and family that are experts in everything, right? (laughs) You know, you know, we always have uncle, you know, so-and-so that was a lawyer once or is doing mortgage in Chicago and they'll tell us something. And here's my, without telling your uncle in Chicago that he's wrong, here's my advice. Trust your uncle but verify by calling an expert locally. Yep. Trust, but verify. Because here's the, here's the problem, and I know you see it probably more than I do, where someone was told, maybe by a bank, that you need 20% down. Or maybe by their friend that interest rates are at 7.5% and blah, 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 and you're never going to get a loan. So they don't ask the question. That's the biggest mistake that I see buyers making in a shift where they've resigned and this is one of the reasons I think you see the lower applications because the rumor mill is very powerful. There's a million a million posts a day that don't make sense that act like they do on social media. Not everybody is the same. So when you when you're curious about something, I don't care what it is, get a second opinion. Work with real estate brokers that that work with lenders and if they don't ask them why they don't. Because we have to structure the deal as a realtor meaning structure the financing with the correct addendums and the correct language to take advantage of the lending opportunities with mortgage companies like Prime Lending that have the flexible programs. You see, some people, especially big banks, they just have a handful of programs. Other mortgage companies might say they have access to 100 programs, but they only know six, and they push what they know. They push what they're familiar with and they will talk you out of the things that they're uncomfortable with or don't know enough about to act like they're comfortable with because they're not, they're, they're uneducated, not that they're dumb. They're just uneducated in the programs that they may even have available to them in their mortgage company, but they're just not comfortable because they don't do them and they don't do them. So it's this proverbial cycle. So what I tell people is talk to Michael at Prime Lending because you guys have rolled up your sleeves and you weren't, for one, driven strictly by refinances, right? We exactly. talk. Go ahead and t- tell people what that means. What does that mean, what I just said? As far as refinances? Yeah, like some, some mortgage companies are focused on just that for 10 years. Yeah. So when you enter a, a rate market where interest rates are just insanely low, you see everybody and their mother come out of the woodwork to get into the industry as far as mortgages go. And they want to capitalize on the fact that it's easy money, it's low hanging fruit. And they focus on cash out refinances and rate term refinances. And then when interest rates go up, you see a mass exodus from the business because they haven't built their business on purchased based business or relationships. They haven't established relationships with realtors to, in order to help clients. It's just kind of take it as they come. And once that source dries up, they're no longer in it. So let's say that person's still in the business and you go to them for a home loan on a purchase, they're not going to have nearly the amount of experience because they've only been doing refinances for the last couple of years. You would rather work with someone who's been in the business a decade, seen some ebbs and flows in the market, but has also 
turned around and and was able to be creative with different purchase um, opportunities with different buy- buyers and putting things together and being strategic and that value is is irreplaceable yeah yeah creativity is an important component and creativity you know said differently is expert advisor knowing what product in what situation in conjunction with a real estate broker that knows how to write the deal from a structural perspective in a way that's going to fully maximize um, the efficiency of the program and get you the buyer the best deal. And to your point, often that's the seller more. Um, that buy down rates is something that's so overlooked. Um, and people are like, I can't get 100% financing anymore and I don't have enough cash. Well, there are programs that we can do that with, right? So don't, yep. you know, remember this. We say it a lot, but remember this. If you're renting, it's 100% interest. It's hundred percent right. interest. And if you can't buy today, guess what? Michael will tell you, you can't buy today, but here's what we do to get you to where you can buy maybe this winter, maybe when the sellers are even more motivated than they are right now. So the time to start is now, not this winter. That's important too. And would you explain that it's com- like, just double check my words. It's confidential and you can develop a plan, correct? Yep. Absolutely. Everything's confidential. doesn't matter how, bad your situation is or how you how bad you think it is everything remains between us and we can just put you on a plan to help you achieve your goals and however long that takes um does not matter hey man i've been bankrupt it sucks you know yeah. but i made it i made it back you know and in ebb and flow don't judge yourself just stop the negative judgment you know we've all been there we've all been through tough times and if you're feeling stuck the point is to reach out to people that actually care about you. They're not just, you know, selling you stuff you don't need. But that's what Keller Williams is all about. Our goal is to change life to lives to the life they want and the life they deserve using real estate as the vehicle to do it. And we partner with people like Prime Lending for a reason because they're integrity based and they know what they're doing. All right, Michael, go back to catching salmon and all those other things oh, yeah. you're going to do today on this beautiful, beautiful <laughs> summer day. I'm envious. Oh, yeah. um, thanks for coming, man. Absolutely. Thanks, Russ. All right, everybody get outside. Enjoy the summer while it's here because you know how it goes. Bang, summer's over. That's how fast life goes. So go spend some time with your friends and family. Uh, Be safe out there. And thank you from the bottom of my heart to tuning into the show. We'll see you next week. Talk to you soon. It's a bright new day. Just came my way.